What's up everybody? Welcome back to the channel. I'm Jen and in today's video I'm taking this gossip bench that I'm sitting on and completely transforming it using chalk paint. I actually inherited this piece from my grandparents and I've just been sitting on it all this time. <laughs> I'll see myself out. It's not really minor mat style, but we just never really knew what we wanted to do with the piece. And when I picked up a whole bunch of folk art chalk paints recently, there was one color in there that just screamed out to me that it needed to go on this piece. But it's already getting a little bit hot out in my garage. If you have never seen the temperatures here in Phoenix, Arizona, um, I'll just flash something up on the screen right now. Yeah, <laughs> anyway, so it's already getting hot out here. I want to get started. First things first, I gotta clean the piece, then we'll sand, then we can get with the painting. So if you wanna see a really cool furniture flip, just stick around. Since there was no hardware or anything to contend with on this piece, my first step was to clean it. I use a generic degreasing soap that does a terrific job of removing dust, grime, and any nasty goo from the surface. And I love these lint-free rags from Quickie. I picked them up a while back at my local Ace Hardware, and they're tough enough to handle pretty much any dirt I throw at them. I rinse mine out after a project and wash them in the washing machine occasionally just to keep them fresh. Did I bite off more than I can paint <laughs> with this one? I might have. She's big. Not sure if I'll get this done before it gets too hot out here. Comment down below, place your bets. Will I finish this before it's too hot today? And here I'm using another clean wet rag to remove any soap residue. I always do a second pass, but I did that off camera. Okay, everybody, I just wanted to show you some of the issues that I'm having here with this particular piece. Hopefully that's coming out, but you can see here, the finish is kind of chewed up, basically on the entire seat. You can kind of see that back here as well. But after I cleaned it, you can see this starting. Hopefully this comes out super clear on camera. It's kind of like just scraping off. I think there was just so much dirt and grime on here that unfortunately it really impacted the top finish. So I'm really hoping this comes out okay when I sand. I'm getting into that right now. So we'll see how it goes. You'll learn with me. We'll find out together. Hooray! I know this recessed area is an original decorative element on this bench and some people might get upset that I'm filling it in. This piece is mine and that particular style just isn't my jam, so... Whether my decision is popular or not, I'm filling it in. It was so miserable in the garage by that point that I got this first coat done and called it a day. Yeah, you can definitely see it shrunk back quite a bit. So I'm gonna sand this down with my 150 grit. Fold this over. Okay. grid is just not really cutting it. I have this redonkulously old pack of sandpaper that I think I got from Matt's grandfather's stash. I'm gonna see if there's something in here. This is a little coarser that might cut through it quicker because I have double, I'm gonna definitely have to fill this in. You can see there's a groove where it shrunk back. 
All right. We're gonna we're gonna try this one. See if it's a little more coarse. No, no, that's not doing anything but taking the grit off the paper and putting it onto my bench. So that's the strongest grit. I guess I just have to go with what I got here. 150 it is. I've got about a hundred sheets of this, so it may take me a million years, but I'll get it done. You know what I need? <laughs> I went a little too crazy, I think, with the with the wood fill. She's a little thick. This is gonna take me all day. All right, I'm gonna check you guys out now and we'll check back in when I get over here. I still had more wood fill and other sanding to do, so I just vacuumed off most of the dust. Wood filler tends to shrink as it dries, so even though I had a healthy blob on there, I needed a shallow second coat. While the filler dried, I got started sanding the shelf. I still hadn't figured out what to do with this shelf, but I kicked around some faux, like maybe a wood grain to match the furniture in our living room. No matter what, I wanted to do something two-toned. I needed to sand through the finish. Unlike with the wood filler, my 150 and 220 grit cut through this with no problem. The wood fill sanded down much quicker the second time around. I also added a bit to some of the damage spots on the seat that I had talked about earlier. Then I ran the vacuum again and did not yet pull out my rags because I'm still not done sanding this piece. Oh, spindles, why did there have to be so many of you? <laughs> If I'm being honest, this is the real reason I hadn't done anything with this gossip bench all these years. I'm only sharing a high speed of these first two, but I'll keep it real. These two took over six minutes to sand. With 16 of these spindles and four legs that have just as much curved detail, I had a long day ahead of me. I got down to the raw wood where the finish was somewhat damaged on the top and I finally <laughs> finished sanding. Woohoo! Those spindles were no match for my lint-free rags though. I only used a slightly damp rag to clean off this dust. It didn't smell bad or anything, so it didn't need another soap scrub. Sorry I can't share the water, I washed this thing so many times over different days, so this nasty AF rag will just have to do. I covered the top shelf with a mix of one inch delicate painter's tape. Recycled paper I got in my latest Amazon order, and two inch heavy duty masking tape to keep everything in place. Thank you. 
I'm not painting the underside of this gossip bench, so I focused on the top surface and the entire edge. But none of this was quite so critical, which, if you stick around, you'll see why in a minute. Finally, it was time to paint. Now, I know I just said I didn't do the underside and this is upside down, but I flipped it because it's easier to access the legs this way. I'm using my two inch straight cut purdy and my new favorite folk art chalk paint in the color Java. One of the reasons I picked this color and considered doing the faux is that it'll match the side chair we have in our living room. And I love this color. It's so close to black, but not as harsh. The coverage of this paint is awesome, even after watering it down about 5%, and I'm keeping my Mr. Bottle handy, even though I wet my brush in the sink. That's mostly because I live out here in Phoenix, Arizona, one of the driest places in the world. Okay. The harsh reality is that it's harsh reality here in Phoenix. I really want to get a first coat of paint on this thing. I'm not gonna bring it inside because once I water it down, the chalk paint just kind of flings everywhere. So I don't wanna bring this in the house to paint it and it is already blazingly too hot. So I'm gonna come back out here tomorrow morning and I'm gonna get this first solid coat on. Wish me luck. I did my best to get out there early the next morning, but I'm just not a morning girl. Nor am I really a desert rat, so working through the heat of summer, it's a definite challenge for me. I'll go for as long as my body feels okay, but I never push it. I finished up the first coat by getting a solid coat on the seat. I crossed my fingers that the paint wouldn't dry strange over the wood filler, but I watched it drying and it looked fine as I moved up onto the back and spindles. The second coat went on just as smoothly as the first, and even though I grumbled about those spindles, my brush is broken in enough now that it worked great around all those curves. The first coat of coverage was also pretty good, so the second coat was more for filler. And I went full strength for coat two, no watering down. Okay, so I made a number of sample boards for what to do with the faux on this shelf.
And even though I liked them all, my eyes just kept flicking back to this wood in its raw state. I wanted to see what it looked like with all of the old finish sanded off before I committed to a design style. So I got super detailed and into every last corner. and along the entire edge. Then I cleaned the piece. And as I brought out the grain with the water, I knew exactly what I had to do. I had to leave the natural grain on this shelf and top coat it as it was. I used a bunch of tape and plastic on the base because I still had a couple of touch-ups to do before top coating that part. So I didn't want to risk splashing or drips. Oh, and nobody will be surprised to hear I'm using Dead Flat Varnish, my favorite by Modern Masters. I only filmed this first coat, but I did a total of three, sanding lightly with 220 grit and wiping down between each coat. And I got the top coat on the base as soon as the touch-up paint dried. Which means this Gossip Bench makeover is done! I'm honestly blown away with how slick this piece turned out. Considering I'm not usually very slick, this feels like an extra special achievement for me. What do you think? Leave me a comment and let me know if this is the color scheme you would have chosen for a piece like this telephone table. And don't forget to like the video if you enjoyed it. Then subscribe for more furniture, faux, and DIY videos every week. That's all I've got for today, though. Thanks so much for watching. Later, peeps. I don't know what I was thinking with all these spindles. I gotta be crazy. Out of my mind. Oh God, breeze. Thank you. Oh my goodness, that is beautiful. That is so beautiful, I can't even begin to explain it. It might be feeling cooler because I'm so sweaty. <laughs>